Hi, my name is Alex Spencer, and this is a tutorial for Tuts Plus. I love my MacBook Air. It is a workhorse in an insanely portable package. I do, however, have one complaint, and that's the hard drive. It is small. Think smaller than an iPod Classic. So I've been forced to come up with some tricks to both maximize my existing space as well as keeping the space I have tidy. In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to find and remove large files, zip and compress single or multiple files, use a time capsule to offload files, and use cloud-based storage services. Let's get started! Finding and removing large files or duplicates is a great way to create and maintain free space on your hard drive. Click the Finder icon on your dock. Finder will launch in All Files mode. You'll be presented with a list of files already sorted by size. In fact, Finder will even group these files. Examples are 100 megabytes to 10 gigabytes, or 1 megabyte to 100 megabytes. Start going through the files in the largest group and trash any file that is either a copy or that you no longer need. I'm going to secondary click on this file and click Move to Trash. Once I've gone through my entire file list and moved everything to the trash, I need to also remember to actually empty the trash to free up space on my hard drive. To do this, I come down to the trash can icon and click on it. And to the top right, I see the empty icon. I click empty and then empty trash and I've freed up space on my hard drive. In going through your files, if you really must keep most of the larger ones, that's okay. I'll show you how to offload them to the cloud or a time capsule later on in this tutorial. Next, I will demonstrate a technique called archiving. Archiving, or zipping, is a technique in which you take one or many files and convert them into a singular compressed file, sometimes referred to as an archive. For this example, I will demonstrate on a singular file, but again, remember, this will work on a folder containing multiple files as well. I'm going to go ahead and close my All Files window, and you'll notice that I've downloaded a pretty large MP4 file that I recorded quite a while ago. I'm going to right click on this file and go to Get Info so you can see the file size is 72.6 megabytes. Once again, I'm going to right click on this file, but this time I'm going to choose Compress Toggling V2.mp4. When I do, I see the compression menu come up, and when it's finalized, you'll see I have a new file with a .zip at the end of it. If I right click on that file and go to Get Info, you'll see that the archive version of the file is 72.3 megabytes. That's a 0.3 megabyte size in savings. So I'm gonna go ahead and close down the Get Info window for the original file, right click on the file, and move it to the trash. I'm going to go ahead and right click and empty the trash again, and confirm, and by archiving that file, I've saved myself the 0.3 megabytes. Again, that doesn't sound like a lot of storage savings, but this is with a single file. If I did this with many, many large files, say a photo album, this would be quite a considerable savings of storage space. If you have already gone through your hard drive and removed as many large or duplicate files as you can and archived the rest, but you're still running out of physical storage on your Mac's hard drive, it may be time to consider a time capsule. A time capsule works with the airport utility software available on Mac OS X or iOS devices and setup is dead simple. Anyone who has ever fiddled with the user interface software on other routers or network attached storage devices will attest to just how horrible it could be. But with a time capsule, it's incredibly easy. Time capsules come with either two or three terabytes of storage and that is nothing to laugh at. By enabling the Back to My Mac feature on the time capsule, I can easily access any file I store on my time capsule from any internet connection, not just the one in my home. This means the only files I really need to keep on my MacBook's hard drive are the ones that I might need offline. Those are pretty few and far between. To enable the Back to My Mac feature on your time capsule, make sure you have the airport utility program launched and running, and then click on the image of your time capsule. You'll see a box come up with all of your Mac's IP addresses, and you'll click the Edit down in the lower right corner. Under the Base Station General Utility Settings, you'll see Back to My Mac. Click the plus button and enter in your Apple ID, username, and password, and click Sign In. You'll see I've already done that, and I have a green light. Once Back to My Mac has been enabled for your time capsule, you'll be able to access it simply by going to your Finder, and on the left-hand side under Shared, you'll see your time capsule and all of its available files. 
Now all you need to do is move any large or duplicate files that you must keep from your Mac's hard drive over to the time capsule hard drive. If setting up a time capsule isn't feasible at this time, perhaps cloud storage would be a better alternative. Simply put, cloud storage is using third-party server space to securely store your files. Much like with the aforementioned time capsule, using a service like Dropbox, Box.net, Google Drive, or iCloud can significantly help towards maximizing your storage space. Simply sign up for one or all of these free services and start offloading files to their computers, thereby freeing up space on yours. As long as you have internet access, you'll be able to access your files. If you use or store a lot of pages, numbers, or keynote files, I would highly recommend using iCloud as their default save location. The best part about that is you can access those files from an iPhone, iPad, or even a borrowed PC via the web browser. In fact, you'll notice I've just used my Chrome web browser and gone to www.icloud.com. If I come down and sign in, you'll see that I not only have access to mail, contacts, calendars, find my iPhone, but I also have access to any documents I've created in Pages, Numbers, or Keynote. Let's take a look at Pages. By clicking the Pages icon, we can either create a new document or edit and save any of the existing documents we may have already created within Native Pages app. Double-clicking this demo document will bring up a copy of it in a user interface that looks remarkably similar to the Native app. I can still insert tables, texts, shape, change the font, size, bold, italic, alignment, line spacing. I can pretty much edit this document any way I feel necessary, and keep in mind I'm doing it all within my web browser. And saving the document entirely to the cloud. It's taking up no space on my Mac's hard drive. Nowadays, files seem to be getting larger and larger, leaving us as end users scrambling to find better ways to manage our storage. So if you find yourself running out of storage space, remember, you can always find and remove those really large files or duplicates, zip or compress any large files or duplicates you come across, set up and start using the time capsule with the back to my Mac feature, or sign up and start using cloud-based storage services. Just one or two of these techniques will dramatically increase the size and space available on your Mac computer. Thanks for watching.